Could you give our global audience a bit of insight in terms of some of the initial progress that you've been able to make and what you hope to take away from Charm over the coming hours? Yeah, two things. First of all, I think there is a welcome focus on delivery, uh, delivery on the commitments that have been made last year in Glasgow. But also there's an increasing focus on loss and damage, what we term loss and damage. Countries that are already suffering from the devastating impacts of climate change, particularly weather events. And this morning I was at a breakfast where we launched the Global Shield, um, an initiative of Germany and, and, and Ghana, along with G7 countries and V20. Uh, and it was interesting to hear the, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, the President of Sri Lanka, uh, Prime Minister of Paulu, all talk in very moving terms about the extraordinary devastation brought this year on their countries as a result of severe weather events caused by climate change. And so the message is that along with all of the measures we must take to reduce emissions, we also now have to look at adaptation and creating financial instruments in terms of dealing with catastrophic risk and through all of us coming together to try and create that buffer for people. Let's get into some of the domestic priorities for Ireland. Wind energy is at the top of your list. We've spoken to some investors who are saying there are delays, there are regulatory issues in delivering on the major ambitions, which is, I think, 7 gigawatts by 2030. How do you respond to that? I think we have reformed our, our planning framework. We brought in new legislation to create a new agency to streamline um, a maritime um, economic um, development, and that includes wind farms. And also, we have... Uh, bringing to a close uh, a fundamental rehaul and overhaul of our planning code uh, to make it again faster, more streamlined uh, for people. We have a great asset, it's wind, and wind off uh, the shore in Ireland is particularly strong, uh, and we are in a position by 2030 to have 80% of all electricity generated by wind. We will get there and we will work with industry uh, to make sure we can accelerate the targets. The European Union is also providing uh, legal instruments, uh, a public overriding clause, for example, that can move offshore wind platforms yeah. more quickly. Tishak, there's a lot of debate about the right way to address methane emissions and, you know, 25, 30 percent. Uh, what is your view on that, given that at the moment for Ireland it's 25 percent, but the rest of the world appears to be moving towards the 30 percent? Yeah, I think we have a strong agricultural sector in Ireland, a very carbon efficient method of food production, but nonetheless we can do better, uh, dairy and beef being the big ones. So uh, we have set what are very challenging targets for farmers in Ireland. And farmers understand this in terms of their individual um, farm enterprise, perhaps more than most in the population. So I think it's a realistic target that is challenging, but that we can achieve. And I think it's better to set targets that are realistic and achievable than shooting for the stars and not getting there. I want to pull you along to a more political tone to the conversation. Uh, last time we caught up, you were optimistic about the new energy uh, in British politics, that the initial tone was positive. In terms of the Northern Ireland status in the wake of Brexit, how has that tone evolved over the last six to eight weeks? Well, I think uh, Rishi Sunak is now British Prime Minister, and I spoke to him two weeks ago. It was a positive engagement. We will meet again uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, he has also met with Ursula von der Leyen. So I think the, 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 the desire to have a negotiated settlement is there on behalf of the UK government, on behalf of the European Union. Talks have started, uh, and our view is a, a negotiated outcome is the best way to deal with this, particularly given the enormous challenges we face collectively, uh, the war in Ukraine, the climate crisis, and energy price levels as well. So the, it makes sense that we resolve this issue, and we believe it can be done by negotiation, and we welcome the positive signals emerging from Westminster and from Downing Street that they too want to resolve this through negotiation. I mean, just yesterday, Bloomberg reported that the UK is going to legislate to extend the deadline for holding an election in Northern Ireland. I mean, is this helpful or just, just playing politics? No, it's, it's uh, I mean, I think we have to have patience. The government is just in. Um, I think we should concentrate on resolving the protocol issue um, and avoid perhaps an election in the short term that could prove to be more polarizing than previous elections. The focus, in my view, should be on uh, endeavouring to, to, to resolve the issue through negotiation. And I think that would create greater stability within Northern Ireland if that was achieved.